Welcome back. You ready to go to movies? I hope so. I got a special one for you tonight. Um, we're going to be watching Abbott and Costello uh, and the 1951 classic Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, this is one of only two movies that they did in color. The second one being uh, Abbott and Costello meet Captain Kidd in 1952. This one in 1951 is one they wanted to do. And um, Universal uh, did not want to film Abbott and Costello in color. So Abbott and Costello utilized the clause that was in their contract stating that they were allowed to make one independent movie a year. And they optioned for this movie to be the one in 1951. Uh, Costello's, uh, Lou Costello's company, Exclusive Pictures, produced this one. And it was distributed by Warner, but Warner had nothing to do with production or anything like that. They just distributed it. Uh, in 1956, 55, 56, somewhere in there, um, Universal dropped Abbott and Costello. Um, the IRS came after them. They had a bunch of back taxes. They had to sell their homes. They had to sell a lot of rights to their movies. And the rights for this particular movie um, were sold to RKO. And RKO re-released it in 1960 and then when the copyright came due for renewal in 1979 uh, they failed to renew it so it immediately dropped into the public domain which is why we are allowed to watch it now um, so yeah that's that's what happened uh, if you are not familiar with Abbott Costello, I highly recommend you get to know them. These guys were the top of their game throughout the 40s and into the 50s. Uh, they did something like 48 movies together. Um, classic hits like uh, Buck Privates, Buck Privates Go Home. Um, they their 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 meeting movies. Uh, but Abbott and Costello meet the mummy. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Abbott and Costello meet uh, the Killer Boris Koloff, um, the Phantom of the Opera. They have a ton of them. Uh, they, in the Foreign Legion, just classic after classic after classic. And they were some of the biggest money makers in Hollywood throughout the 40s and into the early 50s. Um, I've been fans of them since I was a little kid. I've probably seen every single one of those movies, but I haven't seen a lot of them. I haven't really, I don't think I've seen many of them recently. Uh, I can't remember the last one I actually sat down and watched. And when I found out this one was in the public domain, I was like, oh, awesome. So we're going to watch it. <laughs> so kick back, relax. The movie is about 83 minutes long. So it's not really very long at all. Uh, it does start off in black and white. Um, the dream sequence, which is uh, that, that kicks in where the story of Jack and the Beanstalk is, is what was filmed in color, in Technicolor. Um, and then it bounces back into black and white near the end of the movie as well. So there's nothing wrong with your YouTube. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, without any further ado, we are going to watch... Uh, Evan Costello, Jack and the Beanstalk, and here we go. Thank you. 
What do you have against babysitters? Why, nothing. Nothing? It's a psychological stumbling block. The juvenile mind resents the restraint of adult authority. You ever have the feeling you're too old for your age? Physically, I'm only eight. Mentally, the doctors refuse to believe it. Why do you bring my sister flowers? Because you want to marry her? It's all part of the racket. Where is Eloise? <laughs> lipstick so you can kiss it off. Come on, young fella. I'll put you to bed. Or your sister and I are going to be late for dress rehearsal. Why do I have to go to bed? Only children go to bed this early. Arthur, I didn't hear you come in. You should have. I made quite an entrance, thanks to Junior. Donald, didn't you promise Mother and Dad you'd be a good boy? I am being good. It just happens that their standards are much higher than mine. Where's his babysitter? His sitter? Uh, well, Don, go in and wash your teeth and go to bed. And don't wake your baby sister. What's the matter? No babysitter. There are dozens of babysitters in the neighborhood. Well, not for my dear brother. He's been declared out of bounds. Have you tried the employment agencies? They don't have babysitters. Well, it looks like my understudy will have to go on tonight. Start calling every employment agency till you find one that's open. Get somebody. Anybody. It sounds like a bad idea, but I'll do it. And I'll handle my pal Donald. <laughs> it's pretty reckless driving. I'll say it is. You ought to watch where you're going, big boy. What are you trying to do, get away? Out of my way, shorty. Oh. I ought to run you Jeez. in for this. You're big enough to carry me in. Uh, <laughs> officer, we're terribly sorry. Well, all right, but don't let this happen again. Now get off of my car. What are you going to do with that? Put it away. Well, keep it there. Yes. Uh-huh. I'd better hang up. We've been talking for ten minutes. Here comes my heavy date for tonight. Bye. Who are you calling a heavy date? You. Can you wait outside for five minutes? Or will you get a ticket? Well, if I do, I can get it fixed. I have influence. Don't do that! Why don't you look where you're going? See outside, baby. What do you see in a tall, dark, handsome fella? Plenty. Girls never say that to me. What do they say to you? Shh, not mixed up. <laughs> Cosman Employment Agency. Yes, I have been on the phone for quite a while. I'm sorry, we don't list babysitters. Uh, just a minute, lady. You are, look, minute. you are looking at the world's greatest babysitter. That's right, miss. Sure. He is the best. Where do you fit into this? Oh, I'm his agent. Yes. He lets me keep 10% of everything I earn. I'm sorry I took so long. But fortunately, a professional babysitter just came in. May I have your address, please? Thank you. He'll be right out. Goodbye. Oh, thank you, Miss. Gee, you're wonderful. I like girls like you. Eyes of blue and five feet two. Two! <laughs> Sorry to be late. It's okay. Shall we go? You mean you and I are going out together? You see, Dink, I have a way with girls. Please. Now listen. Yes, 
Yes, Daddy. <laughs> he's, he's so big. Come on, we've got a babysit. Get with it. You so clumsy. I'm excited. Why? This is my first job. Gee, I hope he's a sweet child. Oh. I love children. Come on. It's about time they got here. Are you the uh, babysitter? Uh, he sure is. You're kind of big for a baby. <laughs> You're not for me. Oh, uh, rejected again. I guess it isn't my night. Won't you come in? Uh, sure. Surely. Well, who will be plenty of comfortable here? Well, it's too late to get anyone else. Have you had much experience with babies? Oh, yes, sir. I've been a baby all my life. Uh, uh, don't you worry. <laughs> uh, the kids just love them. He makes them feel so superior. In which they are. Sure. Well, they're both sound asleep, and I'm sure you won't hear a sound out of them all night. But if you need anything... Oh, no, madam. I won't need a thing. I'm prepared for everything. No one's prepared for Donald. Hmm. Well, good luck, and we'll be home after 11. Oh, you're going out right now? Mm -hmm. Oh, costumes. Going to a masquerade ball? No, a play. Play? Kids are going to play. May I see out the door? Excuse me. May I? Oh, miss. At least I want to see the children. Just where are they? Oh, they're in the bedroom down the hall. Thank you. Hey. This slapstick is just so smooth. Want to wake up your sweet little brother? Now I seem to be in trouble. This is my real business. I know kids. Good night. Get me a glass of milk. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, get me a glass of milk. This is unbelievable. This kid talks better than me. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. But I'm, what school did you go to? The baby isn't talking. I am. I know you're talking, but who? I'm talking over here. This kid ain't even moving her lips. This is a baby ventriloquist. I'm talking over here. I know it's you. I mean, I'm... You... Oh, the, the, you! What's your name? Donald. Are you a good boy? No, it's not my nature. I'm a problem child. <laughs> you little kid, he's a problem child. He's like me, I think. Would you like to have me read you a story before you fall asleep? That's been tried too. <laughs> oh, this kid can try too. I'm telling you, Donald. I oughta, I oughta, I oughta. Jack and the Beanstalk. That's my favorite novel. Donald, can I read this to you? Well, I want to keep you happy. Let's hear how it goes. Thank you, Donald. Hm. Once upon a time, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? Once upon a time, a whole village was turned. The whole village was ter terrorized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole village was terrorized by a fer a fer <laughs> ferocious. Yeah. Donald, do me a favor. This is a very exciting book about the giant and everything. Will you read it to me? <laughs> I can't get over the big words. Only because I'm fascinated by you. Here, hold my club. Yes, fascinated. 
Once upon a time, a whole village was terrorized mm -hmm. by a ferocious giant yeah. who lived in a castle in the sky. In this village lived a simple peasant boy named Jack and his widowed mother. They had come upon hard times because of the giant. One day, Jack was told to bring their only cow to the market and sell him for food. Jack, being a very stupid boy, sold Princess Eloise. I wonder if I could have a glass of water. Yes, Your Highness. Hey, Billy, can you imagine me getting water for the princess? Princess, I would have brung you to water. I'm a little tired of people waiting on me. It must be wonderful to be allowed to do everything you want to, whenever you want to. Oh, you don't get around much, do you? Well, what do you mean? You mean you haven't heard? There's no food in the village. The giant, he's taken everything. He's even taken your father's crown jewels, didn't he? That's why I have to marry Prince Arthur. Well, isn't it a love match? I've never even seen him. But as people have money. Did you ever have to marry a man you've never seen? They, they tell me I'm a boy. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, and a very nice boy. Thank you, Your Highness. Why don't you run away? Princesses can't do that. Oh, but maybe he'll be young and handsome and you'll fall madly in love with him. That only happens in fairy tales. But thank you for the water. Thank you, Your Highness. And, Princess, remember, have courage. Fear nothing when you're in the right. That's my motto. Jack! Yes, Mother? Jack, you must stop talking to yourself. I wasn't talking to myself, Mother. I was talking to the Princess Eloise. Princesses don't talk to peasant boys. Oh, Jack, when are you going to grow up and get some sense? Does one go with the other? <laughs> Jack, I've come to a very important decision. You're not going to give me away? No. If we're not to starve, I'll have to sell our last valuable possession. No, you're not going to sell the cow. She has to go. You can't sell Henry. Henry. How many times have I told you Henry isn't a proper name for a car? All right. From now on, I'll call her Albert. But you still can't sell Henry. Take her to the market this morning, but be sure to get a good price. Yes, Mother. You can depend on me. Whatever they bid, I'll bid higher. Jack, <laughs> you'll be selling, not buying. There's a difference? Uh. Fetch me a pail of water, and, and then be on your way. Yes, Mother. Now look, Henry. This is the last time... You got I'm blush on the cow. Beautiful. <laughs> you Lipstick. You apart very soon. You are the only thing I, I love. Now, this is the last look you're going to get, Henry. Take a look. Don't you look pretty? Oh, parting is such sorrow. we got to go, Henry. Uh-oh. 
Oh, boy. Tell me, young fellow, will this road take me to the royal palace? No, sir, but your horse will. Say, you're Prince Arthur. So they tell me. Oh, boy, will the princess be surprised. Princess Eloise? Mm-hmm. You should have heard what she said about you this morning. No worse than I said about her. Any girl who will marry a man for his father's money. Uh-oh. The giant! It's the giant, Henry. But you're safe with me. I won't let him take you. See? What did I tell you, Henry? I protected you. Now, look, Henry. I gotta go tell the prince about the bad giant they here. Hey, prince. Where did you go? Oh, come on. This is no time to play games. Oh, Prince. Oh, Prince. Hey, Prince. He's a rough one, Henry. But why don't you have any cloth? My good woman. For cloth you need wool, and for wool you need sheep, and someone stole all our sheep. Oh, I don't believe that silly story about the giant. Oh, there's a giant all right, Mrs. Murgatroyd, because I saw him. You see a lot of things that other people don't. Did you really see him, Jack? I saw his shadow. How do you know it was the giant's shadow? That's a very good question. Goodbye. Where are you taking my cow? I'm gonna take my cow to Mr. Dinklepush the butcher. Not for sale, for just fair purposes only. <laughs> you have a whole cow. Hey, don't you try to deceive us. You're not going to hold this one for the black market. The idea of selling those less sirloin steaks for seven cents a pound, there ought to be a law. Oh, ladies, 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 I haven't seen a cow around here for months. But you bring somebody to me with such an animal, I'll reward him like he's never been rewarded in his life. I'll make him rich, richer beyond his dreams. I'll pour gold into his pocket. I'll pour gold so deep that... Wait a minute. Not that scrawny animal. <laughs> You're not trying to pawn him off to me as first-grade beef. Why, well, I wouldn't let my worst customer use him for stew. Her. And I love Henry. Well, everybody to their taste, but come inside, Jack, and I'll give you the best deal that I can afford. Come on, Henry. Just walks a cow inside the building. <laughs> Big cow. I'd like to get some of that. I certainly would, too. What you doing? Hey, what's the idea of that? Well, I don't want everyone to know how generous I am. Oh, how much are you going to give me for the cow? Well, you're asking money for that wonderful animal? I was going to give you beans. What do I want with beans? What do you want with my magic beans? I should have my head examined. <laughs> Trying to make you rich. Money you're asking for, eh? I'll give you money. Worthless money. How much do you want? Any price at all. How much? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Dinklepuss. I, I, I don't want that worthless money. Either I get the magic beans or I take Henry home. Oh, you, you strike a hard bargain, boy. No beans, no cow. Well, I know when I'm licked. Uh, come on out in the garden. I keep my beans hidden out there. Come on. Magic beans. You gotta get up awfully early in the morning to put anything over on me. Come on, Henry. Let's go, Henry. Henry? One, two, three, four. Now, they must be around here someplace. You've got to keep them buried, you know. You can't let the village know where these magic beans are. They're priceless. There they are. My magic beans. Don't tell anybody that I gave them to you, will you? Yes, sir. Shh. It's a secret. But I'll never realize, I'll never know how you ever talked me out of them. Mr. Dinklepuss. What? Can I say goodbye to Henry? Well, surely. Go ahead. Alone. Alone? Right ahead. I gotta say goodbye now. 
Be a good boy for Mr. Dinklepuss. Do you mind if I kiss you goodbye, Henry? <laughs> The You're cow's so crying. Such a good pal. The princess. The giant has stolen the princess. Henry, you hear what they're yelling? The, the giant, the giant has, the has kidnapped the princess. Goodbye, Henry. Now, don't worry. I've been robbed. Mother! <laughs> Mother! A terrible thing has happened. Oh, somebody swindled you out of our cow. Oh, no. I made a nice deal for Henry. But the giant kidnapped the princess and is holding her for ransom. Oh, the poor girl. I'll gladly contribute the money you got for the cow. Money? Only a fool would take worthless money for such a valuable animal. I got five magic beans. Oh, Jack. Why is it whenever I send you on an errand, you always do the wrong thing? One, two, three, four, five magic beans. Ain't I a smart boy for outsmarting a butcher? You were indeed. Plant the beans, my boy. Maybe they'll grow something that we can eat. Mother, plant the beans, Jack. I'll plant the beans. I'll plant them. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you're not ordinary beans, are you? Please, beans. Will you grow like magic beans? So I can prove to my mother and everybody else that I'm not addled brain like they think I am? Or am I? Uh. Oh, magic beans. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Grow. Please grow. Will you please go to bed? Yes, Mother. Please grow for me, magic beans. Please. <laughs> Mother, look! Look! The bean stalk! Repeating that nonsense. Mother, this isn't nonsense. This is the truth. Hey, are those the beans that I gave you for that cow that disappeared? You mean Henry ran away? Yes, and I want my beans back. Don't you dare disturb that beanstalk. It might lead up to the giant's castle. So what? So what? 
Maybe a brave boy will climb that beanstalk and kill the giant and save the princess and live happily ever after. Oh, no, Jack. The giant will kill you like he did your poor father. Have no fear, Mother. I'm going to climb that beanstalk and I'm going to kill the giant and avenge my father. And then I'm going to save the princess. And while I'm up there, I'll look for our little Nellie. You mean this boy had a sister? You poor, unfortunate woman. <laughs> oh, Nellie was our hen who laid the golden eggs. A hen that lays a golden egg? Fourteen carat. Up there? Oh, sure. Well, let me help you, my boy. Goodbye, mother. I'll go along with you. Goodbye, mother. That's the boy. Oh. Take your time now. Oh. There we go. Goodbye, mother. That was a goose that laid the golden egg. <laughs> don't worry, Mrs. Strong. He won't be back. Oh, you don't understand. He wasn't much, but he was all I had. <laughs> there goes Jack, the reckless fool, a scooping up the beanstalk, and with another fool. Maybe tonight the two will be bottling alcohol. There goes Jack. The village loon, and almost up the beanstalk, scampering to the moon. Doesn't know what he's doing. He's hurrying to his room. No giant finds it bothersome to grapple with the midget. He'll pinion Jack beneath his thumb and spank him with a digit. Spank him with a digit. I mean, it's either that or you got to watch him climb the beanstalk for like 10 minutes, right? So. to the giant. Come on. 
Mr. Dinklepuss. Now, wait a minute. Are you sure that hen Nellie lays golden eggs? Uh-huh. 14 carat? Uh-huh. Well, then don't be afraid. I won't. Just follow me. What's the matter? How come your shadow is bigger than mine? Well, the taller you are, the taller your shadow. You see, that's the basic principle of mathematics. I am shorter than you. Therefore, my shadow should be smaller than yours. Mathematically speaking, right? Right. Why? My shadow was making a fool out of your mathematics. Why, why that's impossible. That can't be your shadow. No? Well, watch this. Amazing. Eh, you think so? Now watch this. Can you imagine that? Now, if I didn't see this with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. It's <laughs> absolute. It's a. Hey. What? The su. The su. You gotta look at this. This, this, is, this is terrific. <laughs> Mr. Dinklepuss. Mr. Dinklepuss. Oh. I think he's afraid of my shadow. Why don't you be like me? I'm brave. Because I fear nothing when I am in the right. Whoever pushes me around will find me full of fight. I fear nothing when I do nothing wrong. And so I toddle on my way and sing a merry song. I'll be defiant and be obstreperous. If any giant should try to salt and pepper us, <laughs> I'll rise up, up to my fullest height. Cause I fear absolutely nothing when I am in the a man believes what he believes And by these principles a man must stand A time will come for rolled up sleeves And it might help to have a fist on hand If I believe that I am right There's only one thing to be done I don't go looking for a fight But I have never run away from one But only fools will take a dare And there are things that only fools defy if you smell trouble in the air, I'll hold my breath until a breeze blows by. I'll snore defiance like some rhinoceros, afraid of giants. Now isn't that preposterous? <laughs> I find courage a thing of great delight. Sing feely and feely, I would steady hand and steely I I fear nothing.
That was a real bear, a real, real bear too. Seriously. How did you get here before me? I made a new path through the forest. Did you see what I saw? Did you see that giant? He's as big as the trees. Please. Hustler, why you, did you ever talk to me? you got moved to. I didn't talk you into this. Now listen, you know my reputation in the village. You know I had to listen to you. Why did I ever let you do it? Why did you do it? Look, Don't stand there with your mouth wide open. Say something. Mr. Dinklepuss, I'm up here to save the princess. The princess? We gotta save her. You're right. The There's princess. the castle. Let's go. Come on. I... What am I doing? Go ahead. <laughs> trifle too small for me. A trifle, she says. Glory be, I do wish I knew why the master keeps a wench like you around. He likes my cooking. And I don't want to hear another word out of you. A cuckoo. Can you make an Irish stew? Can you boil a potato like my poor mother used to boil them? I can put you back in the cupboard if you don't shut up. And I can tell the master you never put the princess in our cell like he told you to. You win this time. Patrick always wins. Come back to earn my morning, my morning. That is in fine voice I am today. I still can't believe that harp talks. He talks too much. How do I look? Ready to be locked up. Or do I have to be? Orders, me dainty beauty. Orders. Unfortunately, he's right. I meant to ask you, are you the giant's wife? Heavens no. I'm his housekeeper. He stole me last year from another kingdom. Well, what'll he do with me? Release you for ransom money, perhaps. And if there is no ransom money? You'd make a lovely Sunday dinner. That's pretty low-key. Like, horror. <laughs> that chick is tall. dungeon like this? Thank you for calling him music, whoever you may be. Who is he? A troubadour the giant picked up yesterday. Who are you? Just a girl from the village below. What's your name? Um, Darlene. Are you as pretty as your name? My guess is yes. That's a nice melody. Are there words to it? Not yet, but there can be by tonight. What will you be doing? Mm, what did you have in mind? A rendezvous in the garden. I'll speak to the giant about it. Be five, oh, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Mister, if I'm too heavy for you, I just leave walk. Me too. <laughs> Open the door. Take me with you. Open the door. <laughs> Open the door! Open it! <laughs> Here's some extra help for the kitchen. You're a little one, aren't you? But I grow on people. <laughs> bless you, me boy, bless you. Who said that? What do you know? A talking harp. You said that? I said, bless you. And I'm sorry now that I see your silly little face a bit closer. Oh, I mean, thank you, Master. Oh, tis a sight for sore eyes, it is, yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Well, I'm off to hunt in the forest. Will you want any supper? Just a midnight snack. Anyone we know? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Why 
What's the matter with you? Did you hear that? I hope it's not me. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? <laughs> You're standing on my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me. I'll show you what you're supposed to do. Yeah, uh, you show me and I'll show him. Make the little fat one work till his back breaks. How oh, I love the sound of cracking bones. You're a bad harp and you're gonna have a bad end. Sticks and stones, sticks and stones. All right, blabbermouth. Into the cupboard you go. Don't you dare put me in that dark cupboard again. Don't you dare. A thousand curses on you. Well, I'll have me revenge. Come back to it. My morning, my morning. A thousand curses on you, master ma That harp had very bad bringing up. You must be hungry. Would you like a glass of milk before supper's ready? Uh, thanks. Thank you, miss. Or is it missus? It's miss. Why? Well, when I look at you... Now, now, wait, now, now. <laughs> You're too young to go out with girls. Yeah, but this might age me fast. Here's to us. Now, leave that alone. You don't lose any of it. Well, don't get hoggish. To, to us. us. Why, you sweep me off my feet. I'd need a little help for that. <laughs> well, here. It's Henry's. She's here. How do you know? No other milk ever tasted this pleasant. Where is he? There's plenty of time for that. But I have an idea how we can escape, if you're interested. We're interested. Not me. Not unless I can take along the princess. Does she mean that much to you? Oh, no. You jealous? You needn't be. I promised my mother that I would return home with the princess. And after all, a boy's best mother is his friend. Huh? Huh? Was that right? <laughs> <laughs> Your song's finished. My song? Listen. Darling, a song for darling. Darling, for you alone. All he had to do was lip sync two words. That's all he had to do. And he missed it. To know who I am. Why not? Well, all my life I've wanted someone to know me as me, not as Princess Eloise. You have but to command, Your Highness. Here, eat this. That will make you good and strong so we can sail it over the wall. Sail me over the wall? Yes. We're going to build catapults out in the garden. And the housekeeper, she thought of it. She's on our side. Oh, wonderful. You don't suppose she'd let us out tonight for a rendezvous in the garden? Princess, I didn't think that you cared for me? Not you. I meant the young man I told you about. Oh. Well, if I approve, after all, I am one of your royal subjects, and I do so want to see our princess go out with the right fellow. Goodbye, Your Highness. <laughs> Prince Arthur, I wondered what happened to you. Say, uh... Aren't you the young fellow with the cow? I'm alone now. Here's your supper. I 
guess the princess was disappointed when I didn't show up for the wedding. I never saw a girl cry so much in her life. What are you whispering for? I don't want the girl in the other cell to know I'm a prince. You don't? No, um, look, you seem to have some influence around here. You don't suppose you could, uh, let you out tonight so you could have a rendezvous in the garden? How did you know? It's a secret. But first of all, I'll have to get you some other clothes, because the clothes you have on make you look too much like a prince. Prince? Er, uh, your highness, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. He cracks me up, I'm sorry, man. It's just... <laughs> parents don't have the background of yours, but he's a wonderful fellow, and your loyal subject approves. Thank you, Jack. through telling the housekeeper and now i'm going to tell you what's on your mind the prince is not the prince and the princess is not the princess then who are they just a boy and girl in love tonight i want you to order a full moon and keep the stars shining bright history is going to be made tonight <laughs> princess mr dinklepuss i just got through telling you she's not the princess she's darlene larger princess are these the catapults y yes this is my own creation you see all you have to do is get on here I cut the rope and zoom you go right over the wall. Will it work? She's asking me, will it work? <laughs> I'm asking you too, will it work? <laughs> Get on here, Jack. Wait a minute, is it dangerous? Well, it's far too dangerous for a human being. But get on here, I'll show you whether it'll work or not. Get... Wait a minute, too dangerous. Much too dangerous for a human being. <laughs> Come, Princess, I mean Darlene. <laughs> Oh, it's a lovely night to be somebody else. Tell me, what's he like? He sings very pretty. Oh, I know, but shall I... Shall I let him kiss me if he tries? Oh, princess. Why not? <laughs> I have your word you won't try to escape. You have my word. loves me, he loves me not, he loves me. Stop right there. Don't take a chance. You're... And you're... That's right. Is it? I didn't expect somebody, so... Neither did I. Won't you... Sit down? Thank you, I will. Would I be bold if I... If you put your arm around me? Tell you what, if you weren't watching this movie and hearing that dialogue, it'd be a whole different movie, man.
Maybe if someday our arms entwine, we'll weave a dreamer's cloth that's yours and mine. If only dreamer's cloth were yours and mine. He's kissing her. I mean, she's kissing him. Oh, they're in love. Dance? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's so ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how she keeps a straight face through all of that. I find the one that lays the golden egg. Hollywood Cricket? No! Ah, I'm sick and tired of that line. <laughs> Mr. Digglepuss, make sure you find Nelly. I'll find her, all right. Mr. Digglepuss? Yes? Did you find Nelly yet? Not yet. Well, she's easy to find. She's pure white and wears a little red hat. Have you got that chicken food uh, mixed up yet? Oh, we'll be soon. And where did you see the eggs they lay? Well, hurry up. I've got to get to the catapults. I'm a little farm boy. I'm one guy that knows how to mix this food, Mr. Dinklepuss. Well, feed the chickens. I will. Gunpowder. <laughs> it's sorry, it took me a second there. Why is there gunpowder out near the chicken feed?
good, good morning to you, Master. Aiden Cobra. Good morning, Hart. Housekeeper, housekeeper. Where's my breakfast? On the way. And bring me my favorite hen. And what, heaven forbid, do you see in that white feathered biddy? Golden eggs, Patrick. Solid golden eggs. The cells are unlocked and I put the keys back. The whispering master. What are they whispering about? Oh, I hate him. Please take care of yourself. I think she's worried. She cares for me. Where's my breakfast? Yes, master. Here's the eggs. Everything is going fine. I'll go mad, stark, raving mad if they don't stop that whispering. Hey, get a load of those jewels. Come on. Beautiful they are, but can they bring you happiness? How'd that little one get in here? Where's my breakfast? You heard the giant. Can I help you put them away? Can I trust you? Uh, why, what a ridiculous question. Can I trust you? Well, frankly, no. <laughs> My jewel of jewels. My jewel of jewels. What can she do that I can't do? Can you lay a golden egg? I shudder at the thought. Show him how talented you are. <laughs> lay, and lay. Could you? It's only gold. It's my main source of wealth. Take her away. You. Uh, yes, sir. I like a dishonest man who admits it. Carry these jewels back to the vault. She'll show you where it is. Yes, sir. Do I or don't I get my breakfast? Yes, sir. Man could starve around here. Make me a small omelet. Two eggs? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Fresh laid this morning. I fixed them special breakfast food myself. Don't explode. Oh, no. Oh, this. You ruined my appetite. Oh, Mr. Giant, you should eat something. Yeah. 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 No. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Dinkopus! Uh, Mr. Dinkopus! Boy, when the giant gets 
set in the stomach. I'll go get the giant. Be fi fo fum. I smell the blood from <laughs> the Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I grind his bones and make my bread. <laughs> Who's trying to steal my treasures? We are. What about it? Windows too high. Now what do we think, do? Jack? Think. I got it. What? You take Darlene, put her on a mantelpiece over the fireplace. Hurry up! Come on, quick! Mr. Dinklepush, you and Polly get under the chandelier. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Get under the chandelier! Oh, Hurry up! Master, tis a black day indeed. You keep your mouth shut, or I'll cut you to ribbons. Hey, hey, come here. Now look, I'm gonna get the chandelier over here. I'm gonna put you on and sail you right out the window. And Darlene's coming next. Now you get it. Look out. Do be careful. I'll try. Come on, Mr. Dinklepush. You're next. I'll be right back. Uh, I forgot a couple of things. Push. Hmm? Why, you greedy boy. What do you mean? What are you doing with the giant's jewels and my Nelly? Never mind that. Swing me out of here. Take your time. There's no rush. What do you mean? Ah, ah, sh quiet. Quiet, my little gold mine. <laughs> it's my Nelly. Let me, let me see the jewels. Oh, no. They're mine. All mine. I share them with no one. I I come a long ways with... I can... Oh. Oh. Mr. Dinklepuss, I have not seen a face like that since I seen the pork chop in the window. And you have no fear. Polly and I, we chained the giant up down in the dungeon. He can't get away because I left him.
Poor chicken, man. <laughs> Chicken's just getting dragged everywhere. What 
pain. I'm too young to die. Ah, is this kid kidding? Ah, Mr. Dinkelfoot, you gotta help me. So I... <laughs> I tell you what, it doesn't look like Bush, but that's a heck of a stunt. That was a close one. I'm afraid he gave his life for us. Yeah. How are they getting the cow down? I want to know how they get the cow down. Princess? Princess Eloise? Why, of course, Prince Arthur. Who did you think she was? But what are you doing in those clothes? You're Prince Arthur? Small world, isn't it? I never want to speak to you again as long as I live. Let us go, Father. Women. Darlene, I mean Eloise, what's the difference who we are as long as we love each other? You knew all the time a prince couldn't break an engagement. And neither could a princess. How are you going to get out of marrying Prince Arthur? Well, how are you going to get out of marrying Princess Eloise? But that's who you two are. Don't you remember? Where's my poor boy? What's happened to Jack? The last I saw him, 
He was dueling unto death with the giant. Oh, but a braver lad never lived. Ready or not, here we come! There's your boy. Come down. There's your boy. Ah. Come on there, boy. I'm coming. There's a hero if there ever was one. You should see him. Come on, boy. My Mother. boy. <laughs> my boy, my boy. Oh, mother. When am I going to prove that I'm a man? A giant! A giant! Oh! <laughs> I wish the giant were alive, alive this very minute. Look inside his grave and see how lovely he looks in it. He's all laid up like a very good stuff. himself he wouldn't know the monster and if he knew him he would be the only one who watched her he met his doom he fought down and go boom and he never <laughs> looked better in his life someday by gosh he'll be acres of squash and he never looked better in his life he fell on his word of bra la la ha ha tra la la he's perpendicular la 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 Wearing several branches of the beanstalk for a necktie. I never seen a better looking couple so delectai. His toes are curled and he's out of this world and he never looked better in his life. And there he lays to the end of his days and he never looked better in his life. So tune up the orchestra, la la. When you bounce your kitties on your knees in the future nurseries, come on, come on. you will tell them all about the legend of the giant killer. Okay, King, I'm waiting. Crown me. That's an on request. <laughs> <laughs> oh! What's the matter with you're the biggest racketeer kid I've ever saw in my life? Thank oh, what? What happened? Miss, your brother's the toughest kid I ever saw. 
Hey, Dink, I had the most beautiful dream. Dream? I sleep on the job. Prince Arthur? Princess Eloise? Mr. Dinklepuss! Dinklepuss? Are you all right? 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 I fear nothing when I am in the right. Whoever pushes me around will find me for my fight. I fear nothing when I do nothing wrong. And so I toddle on my way and sing a merry song. Uh, it's a classic, man. I love it. I know I don't do a lot of talking during movies. Um, I just, I can't bring myself to do it a lot of times. I can make comments, but I'm not a big talker during movies. So I hope I didn't bore you. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Um, I, I love Epp and Costello. They're my favorite. And, um, I, I've loved them for years and every time I see them, they just crack me up. I just think Luke Costello personally is like... You know, except for maybe like Laurel and Hardy, uh, uh, even past that, I think Costello was like the, he wasn't the prototype because Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, those guys were they did a lot of slapstick and, and crazy stunts and stuff. But I think Luke Costello just had such an ability to be completely, he just, he just looked so stupid and so clumsy and so slapstickish. But if you watch the way he does stuff, like it, it's a dance move, you know, it's a critic, it's a, it's a crucial stunt that he pulls off and it just, he makes it look so dumb and so stupid, but it's just really complicated sometimes when he does things like that, like scaling the wall, like he did. I mean, that, you know, that had to be a 20 foot wall and he scaled it right up in one shot. And it's just like, and he, you know, he was a short, fat, overweight guy that, but you're just like, he just had that skill, you know, and you look today and you see guys like, a little bit of Jim Carrey, you know, John Belushi. Um, you look at guys like uh, even Will Ferrell and um, and some of these other slapstick guys or, or, or comedians and, and or not comedians, but comedic actors. And they can trace all their moves and all their stuff right back to, to Luke Costello. I bet if you quiz them about it, they'll be like, yeah, he was a huge influence. And he was a huge influence on a lot of people. And I just, ever since I was a kid, I've just loved watching his movies and, and watching him goof off and I love watching um Abbott just play the foil against him play the straight guy anytime he t anytime he suckers him into some kind of a move there's a scene in um I think it's Buck Privates when they're playing dice was it that one yeah there's that scene when he's playing dice and then there's another scene where he's making change for a 10 or change for a 20 and somehow he ends up with like all the money and just watching Abby get spun around like that is just hilarious. It's, it's awesome. And, uh, when they go in, the, when, uh, Abby and Costello are in the Navy, they actually meet, um, Shemp from the three stooges. Um, not as Shemp, but the, the guy who played Shemp and, uh, he, they do math on a chalkboard and it just blows your mind. And it's just, I mean, even, even watching their, you know, the who's on first stuff, uh, they're just they're comedic geniuses, slapstick, just cerebrally, um, just a, a fun package to watch. So I highly recommend them. Go check them out. I don't think they have any other films that are in the public domain, so I doubt we'll be able to watch any more of them here. But any chance you get to find the Abbott and Costello movie and for you know spend ninety minutes just enjoying it because they're always they're always going to crack you up. They're always worth watching. Anyway, I hope you liked it. Uh, do me a favor and please just real quick jab that like button down there and if you haven't subscribed please hit subscribe uh, I'm going to try something here soon I'm thinking about like maybe opening this up and doing this as a live show uh, with like a chat so like we can be interactive in this um, and, and see how you guys would like to do with that so I might do that next Tuesday uh, I still have to look a little bit into it because I don't know how to do that on YouTube so I'll probably be doing some testing between now and then but um, either way, 
I'm planning on Tuesdays being movie night now. And uh, if there's something you guys would like to see, it's in the public domain. Let me know. I have a full list. I'm going to get to what I can and um, just, you know, hopefully introduce you guys to some new stuff. Hopefully since I, I, there's a ton of stuff in there I have never seen. So you never know what's going to come up here. But uh, do me a favor and share the video with your friends and complete strangers. And definitely come back next time. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Any advice, any, any thoughts. I'd just love to hear them. So until next time, you all have a fantastic night. Love you guys. See you next time.